Welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at an application of the coding structure that I discussed in how to construct time-sensitive while loops. In that video, I mentioned at least two times and in the description that you could use that control structure to, well, control stepper motors. You can control how long they turn in a particular direction. You can control them independently. That's what we'll see in this example. Or you can control them simultaneously or pseudo-simultaneously. It appears like they're turning both at the same time. Or you can do it with standard hook a belt or some form of linear actuation to the end of a stepper motor and have it turn or actuate a pulley, etc. Then you can do all of that with these time sensitive while loops without having to know the amount of steps or iterations you need to advance those motors. Instead, all you need to know is the amount of time to turn the motor. And we'll talk about in the last example how exactly to determine that. And it's a whole lot easier in my experience, just doing smaller scale pro projects at least, to figure out how long you want that stepper to advance a step at the time versus having to count up all the steps, especially when those motors are making multiple rotations. But that's, we will get there. That's the last example. Let's see what this is. In this routine, it will be using those time sensitive while loops to turn each of these wheels independently. One will turn, then the other one will turn, then vice versa, back and forth for preset intervals of time. One, this motor, will turn in one direction for two seconds. Then motor two will go three seconds in the same direction. Then motor one will reverse for four seconds. Motor two will reverse for five. Motor one will go back, will go forward again for six. Motor two will reverse for two seconds. Then there'll be a two second delay. Then it'll restart all over. And this is just a demonstration of how you can control two stepper motors at least just using these time sensitive while loops for totally different intervals of time. Motor 1's turning, and Motor 2 turns, and notice that Motor 2 turned longer than Motor 1. In most cases, the way that I've written the code, Motor 2 will turn a lot longer than Motor 1. Except in that case, Motor 1's going to turn for 6 seconds. Then 2 for 2 seconds, there's a pause, then the program restarts over. So it just shows you that you can control two steppers completely independently and have one run in a direction for a certain interval or a step. And notice there's no mention of how many steps each of those is taking. I don't even know. I didn't count them up. All I did was tell them to turn with those while loops for a certain set of time. That's it. On to another example. In this example, we'll see how to turn two stepper motors pseudo simultaneously for specific intervals of time. I like to think of this as something akin to a robot motion routine, like you have your little robot running forward and then maybe you have a ping or a infrared sensor or whatever out in the front and when something gets too close or it receives a signal it stops what it's doing, it may back up for a little while, turn itself for a certain period of time, 90 degrees, 100 or 180 or 360, it may spin 360s, whatever you want it to do, but in this case it'll go forward for 6 seconds, it'll stop for a little while, it'll back up, then it'll turn the wheels in opposing directions to simulate a turn of a robot, then it'll go forward, it'll stop, it may turn it'll turn again etc. just to simulate a robot motion routine. And sometimes with beginners starting out it's not quite clear, especially if they want to build a little two-wheeled robot out of stepper motors, first off it's not always clear how to get them to look, at least look like they're turning simultaneously, advancing them one motor a step at the time and interleaving those two things so that it looks like and, you, and in terms of behavior, you do get a sort of 
pseudo-simultaneous appearance and behavior. The two wheels basically, as long as they're not too far out of sync, they will move the robot forward. Rather than, but sometimes they'll have a little drift one way or another, depending on which is the dominant motor. But in people or animals, they have dominant sides too, right or left side. So and maybe it's a feature rather than a bug. But that being said, and that's what we'll look at is turning both motors pseudo simultaneously for specific intervals of time. They will both go forward first for about six seconds. Then there'll be a pause. After that six seconds has expired, then they'll reverse for two seconds. Then they will simulate a turn, each wheel turning in opposing directions like tank steering. Then forward again. Then they'll simulate a turn going in the other direction. Then they'll reverse for six seconds, treating this as forward, if it was a two-wheeled robot. And then there'll be a two-second delay, and they'll restart over from the beginning. But it's kind of neat. It's a neat way to think about it. Let's look at one final example. And now to our final example. In this case, it should be familiar to many people that have ever worked with stepper motors. It's just a simple belt drive system. I'm using this stepper motor. It's not connected. I just put bolts in it to use it as a simple pulley. So that's just acting as a pulley, whereas this is actually doing the turning. This one's hooked up. And what's interesting about this is normally when you try to get this actuation side to side, in order to stop the stepper motor, given that they have no clue where they're located at any given time. They're not like servos. They don't have a inbuilt feedback system. Not these typical NEMA 17. The cheaper NEMA 17 stepper motors you can buy. And normally you either have to get a rotary encoder or you may get limit switches or something to indicate to the microcontroller, okay, the, the centerpiece that we want to move from left to right or up and down has reached the limit that we want it to go to. So you hit that switch, it triggers an interrupt or whatever, and sends the the little trolley back across. And you'll have the switches on both sides, but that takes extra pins, as well as if you have the rotary encoders, you have to deal with the overhead code for them. And in this case, this is just a really simple setup that if you just wanted say a camera mounted on a larger more sophisticated belt system not this jump drive hang around your neck belt that I've used with tape and a spring clip that clearly you'd have a nicer setup for an expensive camera but just to get the actuation of the camera all the way one way and then you want it to come all the way back all you'd have to do is a setup just like this where you use a time, two time sensitive while loops and one of them runs it one way, then there's a pause, then the other one kicks in and runs it back the other way. And the speed will be dictated by the actual motors if you're doing full steps, half steps, quarter steps, etc. And you know, that's just typical with stepper motors. The speed is, well, that's dictated by how you actually step them. But regardless of how you step them, all you have to do is how do you get this to work? Hook one of your steppers up, hook it up, hook everything up just like you want it to be. And then start your stepper running and just take a stopwatch and push go when the stepper starts to turn. And then when it reaches where you want it to be, push stop, switch the circuit off. And then take that time and you can use that as your interval starting point. And you can tweak it just a few 50 to 100 milliseconds at the time until you get it where you want it to be. That's how I did this. And, so, and you don't have to worry about counting steps or knowing, especially if you have a large trolley system that might need to turn that motor for 5 minutes or 10 minutes to reach the other side. That figuring out the step count, that's kind of irritating. Whereas just timing it, taking the stopwatch when the motor starts and the trolley begins to move, push go, and then when it gets 
toward the end where you want it to be, push stop. That's your starting point as far as the interval time. And then you can enter it in the code. The code will be down below in the comment, first comment. And you can get started from there. Hopefully that gives the people, people a sense of how to do a similar setup if they'd like to. It takes a little trial and error, sure, but to me it's a lot more convenient to just run a stopwatch from one side to the other and then turn the power off and then take that time, play with it a little bit, and get it to go back and forth the way I want it to. Well, let's see how this works. See if I've been successful. Or not. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. So let's just see. The little trolley indicating by the spring clip and the little green piece of paper runs to one side, stops. Then does it go back to the other side without rolling all the way around that pulley? Looks pretty good to me. Have no clue of how many steps this motor's taking one direction or the other. But I do know how long it's taking. It's taking seven hundred it's taking seven thousand seven hundred and fifty milliseconds. So seven seconds and three quarters. That's how long it's taking for it to traverse the trolley back and forth in the center of the bell. But I hope these demonstrations and examples have been helpful and you can pair them up with the code it'll be I will comment out all except the first example in the code but you can uncomment and pick and choose whichever particular arrangement you need for your application and as to the parts just getting gaining a sense of what am I using here? Well, I'm using two NEMA 17 stepper motors. In this case, this one's just serving as a pulley. And, and my belt is slipping. <laughs> this homemade thing is slipping. That's why the trolley is losing some ground as it goes and it's rolling more onto that one than it needs to be. But that's due to belt slip. Crappy setup. But the parts is NEMA 17. Two of those, two motor mounts, four of them. In this case, I've been using with those wheels. Those are from SparkFun. That's where these shaft coupler or these shaft connectors, that's where they're from. It's an Adafruit Motor Shield version 2. Just a plain old Arduino Uno. 12 volt power supply for the, for the steppers and 9 volts for the Arduino as well as this ever so lovely piece of wood with water bottle caps for feet. But that's the parts layout. I'll put them in the description if someone wants to recreate a setup similar to this one. And I hope these examples have been helpful, like I said, and definitely if you've watched this video and you're wondering what did what is this trying to show, just check out my video on how to construct time sensitive while loops. And this is this video has just been various examples of how the code structure I talked about and how to construct time sensitive while loops, how to how one might implement it in various useful ways. Until next time, if you've liked this video, please consider clicking like and also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.